back and in the spotlight, uh, we have another author on, Mr. Clarence Matthews, who wrote a series of novelettes, really, called Jacob's Wright, R-I-T-E Wright, of Passage. And these books are a gem. They talk about a young man born in the South, and it's through a sharecropper family, who moves through life and learns the lessons of living. Sort of a Joe, a Joe Montecorto sort of a story, but a little different. And ends up in the North, actually going to college and getting a degree in accounting. Um, his, his publisher, Denise uh, Square Publishing, is a sponsor for our show and is also the publishing company that's going to be publishing a book I'm going to do on uh, historic African-American figures in Jersey City. I, I've had a, a, a delightful conversation with uh, Dee, his daughter, who is an amazing person. Uh, this is going to be a good time. But we're glad to see you. Do you, you still have is Jacob Bright of Passage still out there? Still oh, there? yes. Jacob Bright of Passage is still out there. It's the trilogy that you're talking about. Plus, we have a uh, children's book. The name of the children's book is School Days. And it goes back and it takes segments from the Jacob Bright of Passage. And our main character is Jacob. And you know, it, tells how, it tells how Jacob. Uh, you know, the kind of school back in the 1930s, the three-room school house, and uh, you know, electricity, and that, and that type of thing. And it's uh, also a coloring book. The children get a, they'll get a good, good kick out of uh, doing the coloring. And uh, we're, we're working on getting that book into um, groups, to organizations, especially children's groups. And we work it kind of like the uh, Girl Scouts. You can sell the book and uh, give your group and sell the books. And then make the night and it's a process to probably sell it. And you own a small amount of front, which is I think something like 39 dollars up front. And then when the books are sold, uh, then you know, you turn the order in and you pay for it at that time. You don't have to put any I mean, real money out of the fund. So that's what, you know, that's one of the things that we are. So you can ever bring one of these books on for us to talk about on the show. Sure will. Yes, I wish you would. Thank you. It's very, very attractive. You know, when you, when you first came in, you said you had some problems. No, uh, I'm, I'm being told about some Sorry. things, concerned really about some things. I do a uh, black history class at my church, and I, I'm having a big problem getting people to come to the class. And I know that black folk really, really want to know about their history, and uh, I don't know if they teach it in the school system, but I haven't seen it. And I don't think there are too many other other churches that are that are doing the. Uh, what church is that? That's Monumental Baptist Church on um, uh, Lafayette Street. Very good job. Yes. Yeah, yes. Who will be in my book? Right. Yes, I'm sure he will. Uh, so, so what is the uh, Black History class? The uh, Black History class on Saturday morning at 10.30. 10.30 to noon. And uh, it's, not, it's not a class where you come in and get homework and that type of thing. We really, we have discussions. And I can go back, and I think Earl can go back, oh, my homework is back in. Right and we can talk about, you know, we can talk about things that really, that really happen without going, you know, we do the re do research, but there's certain things, you know, that I can uh, share with the young people, especially young parents, you know, the, you know, the way that, uh, that we were brought up. And you know, things that uh, we can compare what was then and what it what is now. Uh, we know that history does repeat itself. And I can see, that's one thing that's troubling me, I can see history repeat itself, and nobody seems to understand this. Well, it seems to be nobody seems to care that uh, you know, some of the laws that are being passed now are laws that were passed 150 years ago. But if you don't know your history, you don't know that. How's the attendance of the classes? The like history class, the attendance is. One of the problems, things that bother me. 
Uh, it's, not, you know, it's not that great, but you know, we have a nice small group that we work with, but we have a lot of room. The, the building across the street from the church, uh, we can hold two, three hundred people there. And you, know, and you have a class that you have, you know, five or six people, or maybe ten people. It's uh, kind of disheartening, but I've been doing it for 23 years now, and I have no and my co-host here one day cut speak to Chase. And I said, well, I want to call this year-round vacation Bible She said, no, just go to school. My idea was to have the churches, to go to the churches, or to go to the parents, go to them first, and ask certain parents, the parents who, whose children don't go to the church, the don't go to the church, and say, look, we'd like to have your child for a couple hours a day, on a Saturday, which is a great night, and uh, bust them in because all the churches are busting them in. Give them uh, a, a Bible lesson because I think that's important. I think that's important because our children seem to lack the moral values. And uh, give them the black history book and make it real to them um, by bringing in some, some possible figures who are relatable to them in the history. Uh, stuff like that, we can talk about this. I'm glad to hear that you're doing that because it, it means somebody else saw what I saw. And we, we, can, we can start to start with the church. We have a little engine and it's good. And we have, we have a space, like this here. We have an auditorium that has a couple hundred people. And, uh, and you know, then we get the kids in, then we go back and get the adults because, you know, our children, um, uh, they're going to need that nurturing at home. But our own children, the adults don't know to feed. That's true. So we need to have both of them. I, I, I got this idea a long time ago, but one of the things that would be interesting in that is a friend of mine, uh, Wayne Hawkins' uh, son, picked me up one day coming from Christ Hospital. Uh, and I was going to talk about Jackson Evans and what was that. And he didn't believe me. I, I, you know, I said, don't get all words with this with that. And they, they don't know that. So I think I got a way to make all that real. We'll talk about this. Right now we've got to take a break. And uh, we're going to come back. We're going to bring on something of a treat for you. Tommy Two Scoops Parisi, the owner of this wonderful establishment, did, actually was on the Apollo Amateur Hour. He, did a, he went on to sing What a Wonderful World, brought up by Steve Harlan. We have a clip of that here, and we're going to play this for you so you can see it. It is, it is really, you'll also get an idea of why we love comments. All right? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.